Hey y'all and welcome back or if you're new around here, hello and welcome. My name is Katie Murray and on my channel we do get ready with me's raw and unedited. I don't do anything fancy but I do like to sit down and play with makeup and we're going to do that today and I actually just realized that I totally missed sharing this palette. This is from DD Signatures. Now they did close down their store. I want to say again I, it's so fuzzy but I think it was right after I um Got found out I was pregnant with Sophia, so like two years um, they shut down. But this past year, this past fall, they opened back up and they launched some new things. They uh, they have their autumn palette, they had a winter palette come out, and they also had this little palette, the Plum Perfection palette. And I totally meant to make a video on it after I did the uh, playing with her autumn pad palette, which is the classic autumn palette, and I absolutely love this palette. Look at this beauty. So, so pretty. I do have a video already up with that if you're curious. But um, I was going to do a video with this later and it just got pushed to the side. It was a crazy couple weeks around when I got this and I was sitting down today to do my makeup and realized this was sitting over in the corner of my desk and I was like, oh my goodness, I meant to do a video on it. So, we're going to do that today. Let me hold it correctly. This is the Plum Perfection palette. She has five or six of these little quads. I don't know if they're still available, but she did come out with them before. I'd have to look around to find them because I put my little quads and stuff in different spots. But anyway, this is the Plum Perfection and it has four little eyeshadows. Two of them are mattes, two of them are shimmers. I should also say, no, my hands aren't dirty. I uh, was painting this past week. I was building some, um, what is it? I don't even know what they're called, rabbit stackers. I needed a, a frame basically to put um, the things onto to hold them securely. Anyway, I painted it to make it last longer. The paint was this reddish color, so now it's just, it won't leave. Anyway. Back to the matter at hand. We're gonna play with this. These two are shimmers, these two are mattes. This is like her beautiful, sparkly, like intense, shifty. I don't know if it's multi-chrome, but definitely iridescent type of eyeshadow. And then this looks more like a gentle. Let me go ahead and grab my hand that isn't a wreck and I'll swatch them to these two shimmers really quick. So yeah, this is more of a gentle. I would just call it a really nice, soft, like shimmer. And then this is like a super blinding, blinding type of shimmer. Oh yeah, like look at that. And then this one is more like, it doesn't have a lot of pigment behind it. It's a kind of a see-through iridescent, but the shift and the, the blindingness of it is beautiful. So I'll probably use that all over my lid. And then this other shimmer I will put on the inner corner. That'll be a really pretty inner corner. And honestly, that would probably also work depending on your skin tone as a highlight because it's a nice smooth formula with that uh, nice shift to it. So I already primed my eyes with the Glam Light. Yeah, Glam Light Icing Palette. So we're going to dive into this first and then I'll put this on the outer edge. I just feel like that makes sense. Should be pretty easy and straightforward today. Oops, I bumped my mic, sorry about that. <clears throat> Let me make sure I am in focus. And then let's dive into, I don't think they have, no, they don't have names. I was gonna see if they have a name, but the green in here, not that complicated. I am going to put this on the inner half in here. And I am really excited that DD Signature is back. I cannot wait to see what else she comes out with in 2023. Like I said, I was a suit, I think I said in this video, or maybe it was the last video, but I am a big fan of her palette. She's got a really nice formula. It's not the like thickest type of formula. I think you can see from here. It's not like super, like a thick, well, how would I describe it? I don't even know how to describe it, but like I feel like Menagerie is a really thick formula when it comes to the mattes or even um, no matte I think of. This is a thinner formula, but it's still nicely pigmented. So when I put it on, it, I feel like it's a little bit like you can see, I can still see my skin through it if that makes sense. Like it's, it doesn't, I don't even know how to describe this, but it doesn't like stand out on the skin because it kind of blends in so well, but it's still pigmented. So um, like it, it still stands out because it's like super, super pigmented, but just the consistency of the eyeshadow is thinner, if that makes sense. So it's an interesting formula because usually I feel like when eyeshadows have this type of formula where it's so thin, it's like not pigmented or just never shows up. But her eyeshadows, I never have a problem showing up because they're so pigmented, but they have that like really light um, or like um, soft, I guess. I don't even know, thin formula. I think that's how I tend to usually describe it because I don't know what else to do. I have my, um, my mirror on my opposite side than I'm used to because I think it was interfering with my mic because there was a couple days where I recorded and it had a really weird volume to it and I can't figure out what else it could be because everything else looks fine. So I think the yesterday or no, day before yesterday when I recorded a video, I swapped my mirror and now my audio sounds good again. So I need to play around and 
pull my microphone more in the middle so that I can put my mirror over on this side because this is where I like to uh, to look because over here I don't know I feel like it's a little um, I feel disjointed I don't know I feel like I can't see the mirror as well looking out this side um, now I'm going to grab the, what should I grab I want a bit of a fluffier brush, brush but I also want something that I can pack on so I'm gonna grab this Luna Magic I don't think it has a number or anything but this little Luna Magic brush that's fantastic no fallout on that we're gonna go into that purple I'm gonna pack it on the outer corner and then see if I can use the same brush to blend up so I'm gonna pack like that like look how pigmented that is that's beautiful tiny bit of fallout right there and then I'm going to come up here and like that I feel like it's been a while since I've done an update or talked about a little homestead here so you have to let me know if you want to hear what's going on over here but I'm getting excited as I said I'm making some stackers for uh, like framework to hold the chicken or the chickens the rabbits homes I've been doing that because we currently have one two five rabbits my kids are doing going to be doing 4-h this year we're starting kind of in the middle of the school year but that's okay um they want to get into 4-h so the start of the new year we've been working on it and they're going to be showing rabbits so i'm super excited to be doing that with them i loved i love rabbits still and um i i had them growing up and i ha i really enjoyed them so it's been nice to get them to get them back on the homestead to have rabbits and they're so so sweet we only have two breeds right now we have the netherland dwarf that kind of just fell into our lap someone locally couldn't keep their netherland dwarf anymore and um, at the time i was like yeah sure I, I enjoy rabbits like i said i've always loved rabbits and i've been wanting i like the rabbits for like just homesteading purposes their poop is really great fertilizer for the garden so i was like i'd love to be able to have some fertilizer handy where we could throw it out in the garden and so anyway that's how we got him so since we have him we're gonna be showing him but uh also holland lops they're the sweetest little things ever they're super friendly and easy like for uh, younger kids i feel like to handle because the netherland dwarves i mean i guess it depends on the personality of the the rabbit but um, they tend to be a little bit more skittish, whereas Holland Lops, I feel like I haven't met a, like a super skittish Holland Lop yet because they're just so chill and sweet. So those are the two breeds we have right now, and it's been fun getting everything set up to make sure we got a good home for them and a good area for them to raise them and us practice with them. The kids are going to be practicing showing and whatnot, so that's a whole new world opening up. Anyway, let me get back on the topic at hand. Look at that eyeshadow. I feel like it looks very, very nice. It blends out beautifully, like this is one shadow. I didn't have to go in and use anything to darken it or anything to help lighten it, and I feel like it did the job really well. Very happy. I could probably get a little bit of a softer blend up here if I had a fluffier brush. So, I can just take this brush with nothing on it and I'm just gonna go along the edges to get that effect. But honestly, for one brush and one eyeshadow, I'm pretty happy with how that um, edge looks. You have to let me know what you think. You guys know me, I usually use at least like two, if not three different eyeshadows whenever I do my outer corner or uh, blend out. Yeah, blend out my outer corner crease area. I like to use a couple to get a really nice smooth blend. But for this, I mean, only having one, I feel like it's pretty good. I wouldn't mind if it was darker because you guys know me, I always like it darker in there, but for having one shadow, I'm really, really happy with how this is blending out and how diffused I was able to get it with just one shadow. You have to let me know what you think. But yeah, there we go. I suppose this is probably the look that every single person did with this palette, but I'm not very creative, so this is the look I'm doing. It's pretty straightforward. You got two mattes, two shimmers, um, and I like dark on the outer edges and light on the inner, or dark on the outer half, light on the inner half, so. This is how I'm doing it. I suppose um, next time I could just do an all green look with just a little bit of purple to deepen it up because I'm sure that green is gonna blend over this purple really nicely. So it'll just be like a dark brown in the outer corner and then green everywhere else, that'll be pretty. But yeah, it's a cute quad. For me personally, quads, I prefer to have three mattes and one shimmer when it comes to a quad just because I feel like it gives me a little bit more versatility of what I can create. Kind of like I was saying with this, I'm really gonna only be able 
I mean, this is me and my limitations, I should say. But I probably, this will be like the standard look that I get from it or an all green look with the purple used to just deepen it up. I feel like I'm not created enough, created? <laughs> I'm not creative enough to be able to do a whole lot of different types of looks with this quad. But with saying that, if I want this type of look, this is a one-stop shop type of, type of palette, so that is nice. It just depends, I guess, on what you're looking for when it comes to eyeshadow palettes and quads. I feel like in general, quads I tend to not get too crazy about because of the limitations. You guys know me. I like to open a palette and just try to think of something new and different I can do than the last time I did it. So I'm going to put the purple down here. So um, I think that's why for me, I usually don't get crazy excited about quads. Unless I can use all the quads together, which I think is how I like to use her other quads. I, I forget if I did a video with her other quads, if I did one combining them all, using them all in one look, or if that was the Juvia's Place quads, because I want to say they both came out around the same time. Ah, oh, feels like forever ago. I'm going to take a moment to dust off. There is definitely some purple fallout. I don't see any green, but honestly, the purple's not bad. It dusted away. I'm not mad at that at all. I'm going to go in with the green and pop it in right here. But yeah, our rabbits, I am so, I'm having so much fun. I don't know who's having more fun, me or the kids, <laughs> getting getting uh, to know them, getting to practice with them, like posing with them and stuff, because each breed has a different way of posing that they have to like sit in to kind of see their form best and the judges are gonna like feel them over and stuff. So we've been having fun kind of getting them used to us, getting them used to showing. And, uh, you know, it's a good, it's been great for my kids to just learn how to take care of something, be responsible in that, in that way. But yeah, our little Netherland dwarf, the one, um, the one that we were given, his name is Coffee. And he, I always say, was the, like the start of it all because before him, we had, um, a larger rabbit, Rosaline, that we got from my family. They actually have some rabbits as pets that had babies, and so they, uh, we got one for my daughter, but I forget, I think I mentioned it on here, it had, it did not survive the summer here. Super sad. My daughter was so heartbroken. She still talks about him, and I'm super sad about that, but we got coffee shortly before the accident with Rosaline when she passed, so, uh, we had him for a while, which was nice to kind of have a bunny to play with and whatnot. But my daughter definitely likes the bigger rabbits, which I think I was surprised at because I thought she would enjoy the smaller rabbits more just because they're smaller. But she actually likes bigger rabbits. And so she's going to be showing a different breed than the ones we have now when when she gets a little bit older later this year. But um, anyway, what was I saying? Yeah, no, coffee. We got coffee. And just, you know, playing with him, interacting with him with my son and my daughter is where I kind of had the idea of like, we should like, you know, do as a school project, like you guys um, start showing them just in our local area with 4-H and whatnot. I feel like it'd be good practice for you to kind of in, in competition and whatnot, learning that world and whatnot. So coffee is the one who started it all. And my daughter was all for it. She's been wanting to do something like that for a little while. We were going to go down the chicken route, but she likes rabbits more and I feel like rabbits are a little bit easier, at least for me and what I know, a little bit easier for her to to show and to kind of enjoy showing. I don't know, uh, birds are a little bit, at least uh, the chickens can be a little bit flightier and whatnot and they're so loud. That was another thing. I was like looking into the world of showing chickens and oh my goodness, they're so loud because there's like chickens all in one area and they're all clucking or crowing. And I was just like, oh my goodness, I didn't think about that. So I was like, rabbits, they make no noise. That would be a much more pleasant experience to uh, to show without losing our hearing. So anyway, that was just something I didn't think about till we were getting into it. So anyway, we're doing rabbits this year and I'm really excited to get going in that. Um, we're kind of just at the beginning stages with the year and whatnot. There's no shows or anything. We're finding a 4-H club to join and start learning is what the process we are in. But um, yeah, you'll have to let me know if you want want any more details on our, our adventures because I've never shown rabbits at all, done anything like that. Um, when I was growing up, I had rabbits and I did 4-H, but I don't know why we never thought to or we never did, but I never showed rabbits, so I'm really excited. All right, we're gonna move on to the glitter primer from NYX. I'm gonna tap this over. You have to let me know that purple, it's pretty. I feel like if I'm getting really critical, I can see points where I wish I had another purple to smooth them over. Like I feel like you can kind of see 
different depths that I feel like another color would help smooth over. Maybe I'm being hypercritical though, because you, so you can let me know what you see in the camera if you can see those different hues. And it's honestly not even with the blend, it's mostly in this outer corner where it goes from really, really dark purple outward. But honestly, it's like I said, very minute. I'm getting a little nitpicky here. I feel like in general, it looks like a nice blend and for it to be all one shade, you know, one shade that I used to blend out and get that blend, I think it's a pretty good blend. I feel like I, purples, either I'm just super critical of purples or just purples can be a little tricky to, um, to formulate and therefore I'm hypercritical of it. I don't know, but that's just something I feel like I can see. I really need to see if there's like a paint dissolver or something because it's like in the cracks of my nails around the edges and like I can sit here and like scrape it out but I also don't have like five years to go around all my nails right now to scrape it out so hence why they are still like that okay I feel like I have an eyelash in my eye not comfortable all right let's move on we're gonna take that super stunning shade my camera is flashing it better last that's all I got to say now this is looking like a flaky I think you can see that there it's looking very flaky and chunky I don't think it's going to behave like that once I slide it on, but I am going to knock it off and this might be a shade I need to press with my finger, but let's find out. I'm going to start to press and then slide. That way, hopefully pressing it down will get those flakes attached to the stickiness before I slide across because if I just go straight into sliding, I feel like it can just make those flakes fall right off the brush and onto my face. Okay, yeah, pretty happy with that. I don't really see any fallout on my face. So let's do that again. Tap off a little bit. We're going to press and then, oh, this is so pretty. A really great monochromatic multichrome. I don't know what you call this. Uh, not monochromatic. Um, multichrome or duochrome. That's the words I was looking for. Really pretty shade and like the perfect shade to put with these two because it has that shift from like this green to purple in the shadow. So that's like super pretty. I wanna go ahead and use my finger on the other side. I'll use, let me see if I use this finger. I tend to like to use my uh, pinky cause it's not as big, but I just wanna use my finger uh -oh, to uh, see how different it would be to apply comparing a finger and a brush. There we go. Oh no, I see my fingers are too big or I'm too clumsy or both, honestly. Let me take a brush and I'm just gonna smooth it out. But what do you think? Can you see a difference between using exclusively a brush and exclusively a finger? I think there's more intensity. I'll move around a little bit so you guys can see in case the light is just hitting one side different. I think there's a little bit more intensity to the eyeshadow. But honestly, you know, Nothing crazy different. I don't think it's a big, big deal. Let me see if I pat it on. I don't know, a little bit more shine if you use your finger, which I suppose makes sense because you have that pressure you can use to apply it. All right, let me sweep away. Honestly, hardly any. Maybe a few specks on that side. This one though, I touched my lower lash line right here. So I'm, I think it's just there to stay. Embrace the shimmer. It's not too bad, it's just right there where I have that green. Maybe I can use that green brush to dust it away, maybe. That's so pretty. Okay, I'm gonna go back into the dark purple now and we're going to, per usual, go over that edge to try to soften it up. Now with this shade, I can definitely tell that it's wanting to like not st stick or allow the matte to blend it out. It's wanting to kind of like stay right where I placed it. And I think that is just that type of formula. It's not like super shocky, I don't think. It's just incredibly soft um, in that flaky type of formula, which I think is just a thinner or a thicker type of formula. So I think that's why it's not wanting to move as easily as I feel like a lot of other shadows can move and make this area look a little bit more diffused when I finish. But not bad. I don't think you could see a crazy harsh line. It's just gonna, it takes a little bit more pressure slash, um, pressure slash uh, time to blend it out. Okay, had a call with my sister, sorry. And uh, thankfully, the, uh, <laughs> the the camera has not died yet and I have not had to restart the camera. So let's see if we can finish this up. I'm just gonna take some of that purple and bring it around the dark matte purple. I'm not gonna go all the way in, I feel like today. I'm just going to be lazy and just take it a little bit in. 
and also because I feel like this isn't a deep dark purple so it's not going to give me the definition of like a black or a dark dark purple could give me if I brought it all the way in so I'm not super picky about that and now all we have to do is the inner corner highlight so I'm going to take that one right next to it Bummer that I put on a face highlight, or I could have tried this for my face highlight. I didn't even think about that. But there we go. That's really pretty. This is also going to be a really pretty shade all over the lid. It just will not be as blinding and show-stopping as the other shimmer, so I feel like it definitely is will get and is outshined by that shade. But if you ignore the special shade in here and just use these three, that's also going to be really pretty. It's a really pretty, soft, gentle, but still pigmented and sh uh, like shiny kind of goldy shade, which is very pretty with these two. So I think that's about it. We have completed the look. If you're new around here, I tend to not put on mascara and all that stuff because it just takes more time and I don't like and I don't enjoy putting uh, mascara on on camera. And with the minimal edits that I do, it's just something I don't do so much on, on camera anymore. But I'll go ahead and put up a close-up. I have been doing that the last couple of videos and it doesn't take a whole lot of time. So I'll put up a picture so you guys can see the final look in the video without you know doing it on camera here for you guys to see. So let me know what you think. Um, I've also just been really lazy and not putting on mascara in general. Like when I do these videos and I just, I take pictures and then I go. I don't bother putting on mascara because mascara is just a pain to take off at the end of the night and I'm so tired at the end of the night. I don't want to put up with it so. Yeah, that, I've just been skipping the mascara in general. So, this is the completed look. What do you guys think? Overall, I do like it. Like I said, a little limiting for me. And, uh, I mean, but I don't know. Like, do I love it? I don't, I don't hate it. I definitely think it's good quality. I definitely think it's nice. Nice. I think it's just a one, like a one trick pony for me. Like, I really like this look that I did, but I feel like that's going to be all that I'm going to want to do with it type of thing because there's only the two mattes to work with. And now this is coming from someone who is like a matte fanatic. You guys know I like to play with mattes more than I like to do shimmers. I like to get creative with mattes more than I like to get creative with shimmers. So that has a lot to do with my influence here but overall it's a really nice palette really nice quality very nicely pigmented i was really impressed on how nicely the purple blended out for being only one shadow would i have liked one more to work with to get the blend a little bit better yes but i do think this is nice like it's, it's a nice blend I'm not going to complain about it. I think it's a great little, if you need one look or you like these colors and need, you know, going away for a trip for a couple days, I could definitely see you getting a couple different looks out of here and enjoying it. Like I said, I could do an all green with just a little bit of purple on the outer edge to deepen it up and mainly focus on the green and, you know, use this shade and it would be a really pretty look that looked very, that would look very different from this look. So there's a little versatility, just not a ton. So it just depends on what you're looking for. But this look with this palette, I think it's a really pretty look that I did enjoy. So with that said, that is going to do it for me. Let me know your thoughts down below. If you did pick up this palette, let me know because this has been out for a while. If you have not picked up this palette but are curious, I do have a code with a playing in makeup by... Or Ah, can I talk? Sorry, yesterday I did a playing with makeup by Yolanda video and I just looked down and saw it. I'm so sorry. I do have a code with the uh, DD Signature, the brand. So if you want to use it, it's Lady Katie. I'm so sorry for that mess up. But it's Lady Katie and uh, at checkout, no numbers added. And I think it gets you 10 or 15% off. Usually that those are my codes, but no pressure as always with my affiliate codes, no pressure to use them. But if you do, that's the code. And with that said, that is going to do it for me. Thank you so much for watching. I always enjoy chit chatting with you guys. And if there's ever any requests for like palettes I've done in the past that I've only done like a video on, you'd like to see me do another look on a palette, anything like that, let me know down below because doing it this way with minimal edits and just, you know, sitting down for half an hour during my kids nap time and doing my makeup I'm able to just kind of pull from different palettes so is there anything you'd like to see any topics you want me to chit chat on leave them down below in the comments and I'll see you guys very soon in my next video bye guys